Welcome back to Christian Questions on News Talk 104.7 WXLM. Our subject this morning is, In God We Trust? To be a part of our program, call 860-442-9956. That's 442-WXLM. And Jonathan, we are taking somewhat of a patriotic look at trusting in God. We're looking at the history of America and tracing the trust that they had in the God of Heaven uh, in terms of establishing this country. And what we're, we're saying here is once not so many years ago here in America, there existed a heartfelt trust, a legitimate, sober, life-directing trust in God. Now, over time, that trust has lost its luster. It's, it's, it's not only gone by the wayside, but in the eyes of many has become something that should not only be ignored, but should be shunned and buried and purged from your memory. And we go, wait, 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 time out. Why is that? Why do we want to put trust in God away? Why does trusting God look like something that is so un-American, so, 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 so contrary to freedom? I don't know the answer to that. I think that there's some potential answers. What are some of the potential answers for why we want to put these, this away? God has forgotten due to a lack of perceived evidence. So so sometimes we look at it, well, God's forgotten because there's not there's not enough evidence of him. Okay, what else? God has forgotten and has been replaced by science. Well, you can't have science and God working together. Well, of course not. Well, wait a minute. Well, <laughs> I got to I got to not react to these, okay? That's right. Okay. God is forgotten and has been replaced by philosophy. Right. I'm just going to listen. Go ahead. <laughs> and God is forgotten and has been replaced by me, me, me. Oh, you're at Self, fault. Selfishness. <laughs> and, and you know what? Of all of those things, I think that that's the one that really, really rings rings out most loudly. All of them have, I think, pieces of truth in them. But that, to me, is the one that says, hey, here is the greatest symptom of godlessness because we have made ourselves to be God. We've made ourselves to be the center of our own universe rather than being a small part of something much larger. You know, one of the things that George Washington said, and I've got a book of quotes here, so I'm going to be going back to these things. He said, happiness and moral duty are inseparably connected. Think about it. Happiness and moral duty are inseparably connected, implying that we are our brother's keeper, implying that we need to be reaching out and be, being help, helping others. So we're talking about the item of trust, trusting in God. Now, I think... We think the God uh, to to trust in God now is more relevant today than it ever was before, and we want to share with you the reasons why as we go through this program. Again, we're asking the question: Why wouldn't people trust in God? Why would we doubt God's worthiness of our trust? Well, there's four potential ways to look at trusting in God in terms of trying to figure out where you put Him in relation to your trust. What's the first one? Well, the first is God is not worthy of our trust and doesn't want our trust. Okay, so you can say, well, he's not worthy of it, doesn't want it, he's just pretty much useless. That's one way you can look at it. Second is, God is not worthy of our trust, and but he does want our trust. Okay, he's wanting us to trust in him, but he just is not worthy of it, so you don't give it to him because it, there's, there's no worthiness. Third, God is worthy of our trust and doesn't care to be trusted. Or you can say he's worthy, but he just doesn't pay enough attention, Because, and a lot of us, I think, think that. Because we look at the, the, the sin and the death and the evil and the sorrow and the suffering and the pain and the grief and all of those things going on, and you say, well, okay, God, I would love to trust you, but how can I in all of this? It doesn't seem like you care. And or... The, and the fourth, God is worthy of our trust and has proven his worthiness. Ding, ding. That's the one I like. Me too. Okay. We're going to run with that one. <laughs> okay. We're going to run with that one because, again, this whole program this morning is about trust. It's about God's trustworthiness today contrasted with God's trustworthiness 200 some odd years ago when this country was founded. Now, let's go to the scriptures for a couple minutes here, Jonathan, and establish a scriptural perspective as we build it upon the historical perspective. Isaiah 55, 7 through 11. Let, could, let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are 
Your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to them until they have watered the earth, specialist. making it bring forth and sprout. Uh, Rush, uh, you're interrupted. <laughs> He was rushing. Yeah. (laughs) Giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. All right. Well, good focus there. You kept on going. (laughs) And and Jonathan, that's a a scripture that that I think is, is, is is a principle that we need to put in place. And I believe, I firmly believe it's a principle that the Founding Fathers believed in. And that is... That God is trustworthy, and when he sends his word out to accomplish something, it's going to happen. That's right. And he says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return until they've watered the earth, until they've done what they were supposed to do, and what they do is they make the earth bring forth. They Mm -hmm. make it sprout. They give seed to the sower. They give bread to the eater. They feed us. So shall my word be. When it goes out from me, it will not return to me void. It will accomplish the things which I sent it to accomplish. So God is saying that he sends his word out to accomplish specific ends, and that will happen. But we won't all understand it. And we were talking about that last week. Yeah. Specifically with the parables. Remember how Jesus was saying that he speaks in parables because... Some of this is supposed to be veiled Mm -hmm. for now. Right. Okay, for now. All right. So if God's word goes out to accomplish a specific end, what is the purpose for which his word was sent? Well, let's look at Genesis 22, 15 through 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice." All right, so early, early on in the book of Genesis here, you have God giving a promise to Abraham, and he's very specific. And to paraphrase that scripture, he says, In you and in your posterity will all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, if we look at that promise and we say, Okay, let's take that promise in principle and say God's word has gone out, and he said, Through you and your posterity... Every nation of the earth will be blessed. If we look at history, do we see that? Has that happened? No. Okay, it hasn't happened. As a matter of fact, it seems to be exactly the opposite, doesn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. And we don't seem to see blessing, but we seem to see see cursing. So we haven't seen the seed of Abraham. And it's interesting because he repeats the promise to Isaac, and he repeats the promise to Jacob, his, 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 his son and his grandson, 